12.35 p.m., Stauffenberg entered the conference room. Exactly seven minutes later, the world would be forever changed. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the most famous and or infamous but still noteworthy operations that were conducted in secret. The CIA's attempt to control people turned out to be <laughs> just the opposite. Number 10, Operation Susanna. This is better known as the Lavon Affair, named after Israeli Defense Minister Pinhas Lavon. In 1954, Israel was at odds with Egypt and hoped to destabilize the government of Gamal Abdel Nasser. They hoped to induce socio-political chaos within the country and foster anti-Egyptian sentiment in the West. To carry out their plan, Israeli military intelligence hired a group of Egyptian Jews to bomb public places in Egypt. The hope was to place the blame on nationalists and induce an atmosphere of unrest. However, the operation did not work. The bombs that went off were weak and caused little damage. Meanwhile, an Israeli agent named Avri Alad informed the Egyptian authorities of the plan, and most of the bombers were arrested. Number 9. Eli Cohen We return to Israel for the story of Eli Cohen. Cohen was personally recruited by the Mossad, Israel's national intelligence agency. He was trained as a field agent and sent to infiltrate the Syrian government in the early 1960s, going by the name Kamel Amin Tabet. Cohen was recruited as an Israeli spy, but then sent undercover in South America using an alias to prepare for his eventual deployment to Syria. Cohen posed as a successful Syrian businessman and relayed important military information back to Israel during the Six-Day War. Eli Cohen was trained in a very good and very good job. This included taking photos of Syrian defensive positions and informing the Israeli government of strategic military plans, among other successful endeavors. Cohen was eventually captured and publicly hanged in 1965. This came after a plea to the Israeli government that he stop working in Syria. In Israel, Eli Cohen continues to be celebrated as a super spy. Number 8. Donnie Brasco the story of Joseph Pistone was made popular by the 1997 film Donnie Brasco, which is titled after Pistone's undercover name. Who wants to make a movie about me, you know? Pistone was an FBI agent who infiltrated the New York Mafia, primarily the Bonanno crime family. The first director of the FBI, J. Edgar Hoover, forbade his agents from going undercover, as he feared they would be corrupted by a life of crime. However, Pistone proved that it could be done, and done very successfully. Pistone was not killed, and he was not corrupted. In fact, his work led to the convictions of over 100 Mafia members and the complete downfall of the Bonanno crime family. He spends the next six years in court testifying against the American Mafia. He resigned from the FBI in 1986 and now lives under witness protection. No one has ever done the damage in one fell swoop to the Mafia that Joe Pistone did. Number 7. Operation Chaos The 1960s was a tumultuous decade in American history, known for its vehement anti-war, gender, and race-based movements. President Lyndon B. Johnson ordered the CIA to conduct Operation Chaos, an espionage project which hoped to uncover possible foreign influence on these domestic movements. The CIA spied on over 300,000 American citizens, including the activist group Women Strike for Peace and the Black Panther Party. On November 15, 1967, Director of Central Intelligence Richard Helms told Johnson that they had found no evidence of foreign interference, but the project continued for several more years. George H.W. Bush later admitted that Operation Chaos conducted some, quote, improper accumulation of material. Number 6. Operation Gladio Launched on January 1, 1952, Operation Gladio was an extensive stay-behind operation executed by NATO and the entire Western Union during the Cold War. Andriotti admitted that the secret organization Gladio existed. He also revealed that it was part of a much wider network of secret stay-behind armies. A stay-behind operation consists of a clandestine network of spies that stay behind after an invasion and conduct espionage from behind enemy lines. 
the aim of Operation Gladio was to root out communism in Western European countries and prevent the spread of Soviet ideology. In each country, the network had its own name, Gladio in Italy, SDRA-8 in Belgium. The program has been accused of utilizing psychological warfare and endorsing right-wing terrorism, including the assassination of Eduardo Mondlan, the president of a Mozambique Socialist Party. However, these accusations have been vehemently denied by the U.S. State Department. In November 1990, the European Parliament condemned Gladio and Stay Behind, requesting full investigations. Number 5. The Canadian Caper Made popular through Ben Affleck's Argo, the Canadian caper occurred in the midst of the Iran hostage crisis. On November 4, 1979, a large group of armed Islamists stormed the American embassy in Tehran and took 52 diplomats hostage. However, six diplomats had managed to evade capture, so the CIA and the Canadian government began a joint operation to rescue them. Together, Mendez and Seidel formed Studio Six, a fake company named after the six house guests trapped in Iran. The diplomats were given fake Canadian passports and posed as a film crew scouting locations for a movie called Argo. Studio Six's fake movie project is named Argo. The government even set up a production office and took out ads in trade magazines to help bolster their cover story. On January 27, 1980, the diplomats boarded a plane and flew out of Iran, and the operation remained secret for nearly 30 years. After stopping in Europe, the six house guests arrived back in North America to widespread celebration. Number four, COINTELPRO. As is shown throughout this list, the American government is not shy about spying and testing on their own citizens. Short for counterintelligence program, COINTELPRO ran from the mid 50s to the early 70s and consisted of the FBI spying on American organizations. Most of these organizations were deemed subversive and potentially dangerous to the status quo and the list included the Black Panther Party, the American Indian Movement, and a number of anti-war protesters. The FBI aimed to discredit these movements and organizations in the public eye by smearing them in the media, forging fake documents, and throwing people in prison. Some were even outright assassinated, including Fred Hampton, the deputy chairman of the Black Panther Party. Number 3. MK Ultra. One of the most infamous undercover operations in history, MKUltra was a blatant attack on American citizens conducted by the CIA. In the early days of the Cold War, the CIA ordered the creation of a secret program intended to find ways of mind control. The agency experimented on their subjects, using unsuspecting citizens to test various brainwashing techniques they hoped to use in future interrogations. The project was carried out at hospitals, prisons, and universities under the guise of academic research, with subjects being exposed to sexual assault, sensory deprivation, and any number of actions that could be deemed psychological warfare. That was beside my bed constantly, repeated between 250,000 and 500,000 times. Perhaps most infamously, some subjects were secretly dosed with LSD in the hopes of identifying the drug's properties and its potential uses. This operation was carried out between 1953 and 1973 and revealed to the public two years later. And during those hearings, the CIA finally admitted that this program existed. They admitted that it was probably not the right thing to do. Number two. Operation Wrath of God. Let's just say Operation Wrath of God has to be the scariest sounding project, and with good reason. In September of 1972, a Palestinian organization called Black September infiltrated the Summer Olympics and killed 11 Israeli in what came to be called the Munich Massacre. In Israel, the reaction to the massacre was one of horrified disbelief. Almost immediately afterwards, the Prime Minister of Israel, Golda Meir, personally authorized Operation Wrath of God. Carried out by the country's intelligence agency Mossad, it targeted members of Black September and the Palestine Liberation Organization. Barely three weeks after the Munich massacre, Committee X had approved its first assassination. In the next 20 or so years, Mossad assassinated a number of individuals. But the operation faced enormous criticism when they accidentally killed an innocent man in Norway. Ahmed Bushiki, an innocent Moroccan waiter, had lived in Norway for five years. Furthermore, the primary mastermind behind the Munich massacre, Abu Daoud, was never killed. Did it help in any way to bring peace to the Middle East? No. Strategically, it was a complete failure. 
Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Operation Valkyrie You may ask yourself, why did no one attempt to assassinate Hitler? Well, they did, but it was an enormous failure. Following the major blow that was the Battle of Stalingrad, German military officers lost morale and began plotting Hitler's assassination as a means to end the war. The plan was to kill Hitler in a bombing, then take control of Germany by using the Wehrmacht to stage a coup. The operation was mainly headed by Klaus von Stauffenberg, a German army officer who personally planted the bomb in Hitler's conference room. Of all the conspirators, he was now best placed to become the assassin. Unfortunately, the bomb did not work as intended, and Hitler escaped with nothing but a burst eardrum. He said that he had just spoken with Keitel and was told that the Führer was very much alive. The subsequent coup also failed, and nearly 5,000 people were executed, including von Stauffenberg. Stauffenberg, Heften, Olbricht, and Quernheim were summarily condemned to death. Did you know about any of these operations? Let us know in the comments below. It's, it's strictly business. They had choice to be gangsters. I chose to be an FBI agent. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.